Welcome to 5 Minutes of Momentum. These episodes are a short 5-minute burst of inspiration, motivation, and massive action. If you need that little kick up the butt to get things moving and to inspire you to take massive action, then every single Thursday I'll be sending you through a 5-minute episode to download, digest, and implement to finish your week off strong. Are you ready to get started? Let's go. Hey, hey, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in and welcome to 5 Minutes of Momentum where I give you a little bit of burst of inspiration and motivation to think about things a little bit differently in five minutes. Today, I wanna talk to you about ghosting, what to do about it, how to overcome the doubt or the fear or the rejection that possibly comes from being ghosted. And I mean, obviously in the business space, not in your personal dating scenarios, I can't help you there. (laughs) So firstly, when it comes to ghosting, it's really interesting, right? Because sometimes what we can do is make it mean something bad about ourselves, that we've done something wrong or they didn't like us. And my first suggestion, because this has actually been coming up a lot in my mastermind calls where uh, some people have been ghosted. And so there's always questions around like what to do, how to deal with it, how to overcome the fear feeling of it. Cause it's not nice. It never feels nice. Especially if the client has said like they're actually interested and they want to go ahead and then they ghost you. So I've had this happen a couple of times and I want to share with you how I've handled this because I might have a different perspective to other people. So firstly, what you want to do is actually not make it mean anything about you. If you make it mean something about yourself that they didn't like you specifically, or they hated you, they hated your offer. Like if, it, if you're going down that path, it's not serving you. So you want to just push those thoughts to the side and recognize that it's not about you necessarily. And then you want to explore what you can learn from the experience. So I always suggest like doing a little debrief on your sales conversation that you had with the person and feel into what did you miss? Did you miss an intuition nudge that was saying, hey, don't sell to this person or this isn't the right time or hang on a minute, maybe this is not the right fit. Or did you ignore the intuition nudge that said there's another objection there that you need to ask about? Those are little nudges that you need to really pay attention to, especially when you're having a a discussion about services and investing. So I do that little debrief. Could you have done something differently? Could you have presented the offer differently? Could you have explored one of the objections a little bit deeper to really find out what the real objection was? Because the reasons why people ghost people, there's a multiple multitude of reasons. One, it could be they don't have the money and they feel it's easier just to say to you, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll go ahead, but then ghost you because then they don't want to reject you. They don't want to, they're worried about how it's going to make you feel. Other times it can be that they actually really didn't see the value in doing the work with you or the value didn't meet their needs. So then we go back to the drawing board of like, how do we communicate the value? Did we get it across clear enough? Did I ask the right questions to make sure that that person really understood the value of doing the work or working with you or the service or product that you offer? Because honestly, people ghost for reasons that is easier for them to actually address. So sometimes it was the investment was too high for them. They it's the wrong time. They didn't see the value in it. So it's easier for them just rather than reject you on the phone, they just do it afterwards by just not responding. I know it's not nice, but it's sometimes not from a callous place either. So please don't make it mean something really bad. And thirdly, sometimes it's actually got nothing to do with the way that you presented, what you offered, you yourself it actually has nothing to do with that that has everything to do with the person. And so sometimes what I find is that life gets really busy. Life gets super busy and they mean to get back to you or what they said originally on the call about when they wanted to get started wasn't actually really true or they didn't mean to say that or they said it and then realized afterwards that hang on a minute, that's not going to work. Like there's so many different things that could come into play. And so my suggestion with ghosting every single time this happens with any of my clients or myself is I ask myself, how do I want that client to feel after interactions with me? And usually the answer is that I cared that I was interested in working with them, that I have the services that they can, that they can buy. Right? So I want them to also feel comfortable to come back to me, right? So I want to create a safe space for them to feel like it's okay for them to reach out to me when it is the right time. So usually what I'll do is I'll follow up, even though it's scary, even though it's putting yourself on the chopping block for rejection, like all of that, we want to follow up and let them know that it's okay. So I follow up firstly, just to check in, see what's happening, because it could be something completely their field that they just haven't been able to get back to you. So I assume that they just got really busy and then follow up with them. The language that I use is always assuming that they're going to go ahead and communicate that. So it might be like, okay, well, I've got your first appointment booked in, or I'm setting aside this time for you, or just checking to make sure that you got my emails because maybe they went to your spam or maybe you didn't receive them at all. Like you make sure that you are going down the avenue of like, they're not rejecting you. They've just gotten busy. So you go back, you follow up. 
Then if they don't, they ghost you again, then you follow up again and you do this from a place of compassion. So I know life gets busy and things get in the way. So if you feel like the work that we do, are planning to do is not the right time, it's completely okay, just let me know and then I will get back to you at a better time for you, right? Well, again, leave it in their court but come from a place of love and compassion. And then again, if they ghost you, I still would follow up a third time. And I know you might be like, Christine, you're insane and that's stupid and you shouldn't do it. Like, I don't care, do it. Because you want them to know that you care. And this is what's really important to me. I always go back and go, I followed up a couple of times now. Obviously it's not the right time for you. I completely understand. I want you to know that you're more than, more than welcome to reach out to me at any time. Whenever it's the right time, let's touch base and I'll, I'll touch base with you in a couple of months. But until now, I'll leave the ball in your court. Get back to me when you feel ready. Otherwise, hope you have an incredible afternoon and I wish you all the best with whatever it is you help them with. Follow up because you will be so surprised what happens when you follow up. There is so much money left on the table because you don't follow up. And I've had so many clients come back to me because I've kept that relationship up. I've kept in connection with them. And then years down the track, they come back to work with me, right? Leave the door open right? Don't shut it by getting rejected and getting awful about it. Make sure that you just keep following up because you want them to feel like you care. Okay. I hope you've loved this episode and I hope you have an incredible rest of your week.